What is up, Bruins fans? Today I'm bringing you a clip from episode 360 of the Black Gold Hockey Podcast, where Sam Smith, Mark Allred, and Dom Tiano discuss their predictions for who will fill the spot of the second line right wing. Um, next topic of discussion, the final topic of discussion before we get into your live questions. Let's talk about who could be the second line right wing on opening night. So there are a lot of options out there. You have Morgan Geeky, Fabian LaSalle, Trent Frederick, Justin Brazo. Who could it possibly be to play with Brad Marchand and Charlie Coyle on that second line? Who do you think could the second line right wing be? Um, I'm going to say it's Fabian Lysels to lose. Um, <clears throat> but man, he's got to come into camp and he's got to want it. Um, and he's got to show that he wants it. And if he does that, he'll be given first crack. I also wouldn't rule out that Don Sweeney has something else up his sleeve. Just in case. Like? Yeah. Uh, just a, somebody outside the organization. Yeah. Yeah, possibly. I mean, they go LaSalle. Geeky would go to the third line. <laughs> With Patra and Frederick. Yeah, and they, Patra is shown to have chemistry with both of them. And I think you want, you want a Trent Frederick type with Patra to protect them. If Frederick ends up as the second line right wing, I wouldn't mind Max Jones on the third line uh, left spot for the same reason. Um, Jones can play and surprisingly he'll put up points and, uh, nobody's going to go after Matthew Patra. If you got Trent Frederick or Max Jones there, this I, is assuming Patra is healthy. Right. I read that I read a possible lineup up lineup, uh, for the middle six, Let's say LaSalle doesn't make the roster and they go with Morgan Geeky on the second line right wing, right? Let's say hypothetically. Mm -hmm. The third line could be Max Jones, Matt Patra, and Trent Frederick. Patra's not going to hurt. Patra will be protected. Yeah, nobody's going to touch Patra with those two on the ice. So you have multiple options there. You have Geeky, you have Frederick, you have LaSalle. You have a lot of options there for your second line right wing, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's a good problem to have. Yeah, you want competition. But ideally, ideally, if you're the Boston Bruins, you're hoping and you're praying. You want Fabian Lysel to grab it. Mm -hmm. You do. Yeah. No, yeah, I yeah. totally agree. Mm -hmm. I absolutely agree with what Dom's saying. But like, like he said, He's got to. He's got to want it. He's got to grab it. And and some of the decisions um, this off season, kind of, I don't know, not weirded me out, but it was strange that he didn't didn't want to come to development camp. Chose to train over in Sweden, and a lot of people were like, "Oh, he's over with with PJ Axelson training." Well, during the week of development camp, PJ was at the Warrior Ice Arena, evaluating <laughs> talent on the ice and everything. So. Um, yeah, he's just got to have a, uh, he's got to change his attitude. I think that we've heard a lot of good things from Ryan Mujanel at development camp about how he adjusted to the video that went viral that, that we had that, uh, Jason Cook took down in, um, Providence when he was saying he's got to do more, he's got to do less of individual stuff and be more of a teammate. Um, you know, I, if he has in fact bought in and so on, then, you know, good for him, but as a player developing and want to make the NHL roster, I would like really rather see him training in Boston with, with the current players and showing that he wants it and so on. And, you know, I, I am cherry picking a little bit of this from another podcast that I listened to, but it just makes sense that, you know, just got to work harder and, and 
nothing, nothing in this league is given to you. And I don't think that fans should automatically have him penciled in without thinking that as well. Just my opinion. Anyway. Yeah, I've I've said I've been saying for months now the biggest thing with him is is to stay in Boston and work out in Boston. Uh not just the physical workout, but you know, work with the nutritionist. Um uh, work with the skills and development coaches. Uh, it's, it's not about just lifting weights and, and, and that kind of stuff. So yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed that he went home, <laughs> but I also understand it that, you know, he left home at a young age, came over and played at the Canadian hockey league. Um, you know, so as an 18 year old, he really hasn't seen his family uh, for a couple of years other than a couple of weeks here and there. Right. Yeah. They would go, they would do shifts. Like his mother would be there one weekend and then she'd fly back and his father would come over for another weekend. You know, it was, just, it, I mean, I get the whole adjustment thing and, you know, you gotta, that's something you gotta learn when you when you become you know this this profession and hopefully everything gets squared squared away um you know that he starts making some nhl money sooner or later and he can basically afford to you know have his have his family uh live closer you know when he when he's over in the u.s and he's training over in north america they have a place here close by so you know it, it it's all it's all a process I, I still I still believe Fabian Lysel is a very good prospect and so on. He's just got to put everything up here um, in place uh, and listen to the coaches, listen to what they're saying. When Ryan Musinell says that there's a bag of money down at the end of that ice, you just got to go out and get it, guys. You got to work for it. Those are the things that you you need to be motivated by. And 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 in my opinion, I said it the other day or the other podcast last week. Um, you know. You might see Fabian Lysel, uh, uh, you know, with with two entry level years left on his contract. But to me, in my personal opinion, you're running out of time with him. Value yeah. dropping quick, so it's either make it or break it. You know, I mean, the, I think the organization is in the corner with this prospect right now. It's he, it's a, he's just got to figure out, you know, ways to cross that threshold and 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 show that he belongs in the league and be an all around team player. Yeah, you got to figure you, as much as it's good to go home and be home with the family if you want to be in the NHL, you have to be in North America, you know? Now I understand going home for a few weeks and seeing the family. I get that. I understand that. But if you want it, you got to spend most of your summer here. You know, you, if you want that NHL roster spot cuz his goal was to get to the NHL, right? You're not going to get look, to the NHL level if you're playing in Sweden. You know, you're going to get look, to the NHL level if you're going to be in North America. You know what? And I'll probably get ragged on by the by the fans for saying this, but you guys know me. I don't care. I tell it like it is. No Fs at, given from Tom. <laughs> at some point, at some point, you have to quit depending on mommy and daddy. Okay, mm -hmm. to have look the the Vancouver Giants when they they brought him over to the Canadian Hockey League, they had everything all prepared for him. The Boston Bruins, even though he's in Providence, have everything prepared for him. You don't need mommy and daddy running over every weekend to make sure that you're okay. You're eating properly all that kind of stuff, making you home cooked meals because the Bruins teach you how to do that for yourself. That was one of the biggest spots of development camp. It's yeah. Nutrition it's, and so on. It, it's as simple as that. I have seen, I mean, I could tell you stories about young players and how the parents mess things up for them. 
just by being overbearing, not overbearing, but over involved and not letting the team do what the team does best. I mean, I could tell you stories that would make your head spin. All right, you know, that, we'll save that for another day. But Lysel needs to grow up more than anything and say, you know what? I'm no longer a teenager. I need to take care of myself. And if I want this, this is what I have to do. And there are options. There are options. So like, for example, I saw this great video the Dallas Stars did where Joe Pavelski was hosting Wyatt Johnston for a couple mm -hmm. of years. Yeah. Um, you got, uh, let's see, Matt Barzell was living in, was living with, I think it was Johnny Boychuk. I think when he was first starting with the Islanders, I think. I Look, saw we have, we have our own case in Boston with yeah. Patrice Bergeron and um, Marty LaPointe. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you got to, yeah, you have to, you know, there, there are options. If you don't want to live by yourself and you're going to make the NHL roster, maybe you consider living with one of the veterans. Yeah, yeah. Plenty of Swedes on the team now. There's plenty of uh, not Lindholm. only that. Tori Krug, uh, Tori Krug, um, Ryan Spooner, and Jared Knight all live together. Yep, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> you, I forgot about that. You know, you have you're gonna have you can get roommates. You can live with a veteran. Hampus Lindholm, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. He would be one to take in LaSalle. You have so many people up, you know. Yeah. If you're not ready to live by yourself, you can ask one of the veterans to, if you if you can move in with them. At least for the for, at least for like the season, you know. There, there are options. There and are the Bruins, the the Bruins may even recommend it. I think they should. They, they probably do. Yeah, I mean that Wyatt Johnson example. He still lives with them like two years later. There's nothing, and, and and it's not because he wants to live there. It's because it, it, it works for them. It works for the, yeah. for the house. They got used to it. It works. Sidney Crosby lived with Mario Lemieux. <laughs> and he got a puppy and his dog shit on the floor. I yeah. still love that story. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> that's great. But imagine, that's probably half of the reason why Crosby got to where he was, because of the advice and the the, oh, yeah. the experience that, Mar that, that Mario Lemieux gave to Crosby, right? If if uh, LaSalle lives with somebody like a Hampus Lindholm, or hell, maybe even an, an Elias Lindholm, even though he's gonna be, this is going to be his first year in Boston, there is no reason why he can't live with them as a fellow Swede. He can get used to them. You can get used to being a Swede playing in the NHL in the United States and get that advice from some top players. Mm -hmm. There is nothing wrong with that. If LaSalle's going to be a legitimate top player in the league, which I think he has the potential to be. He's got to figure. He's got to learn from the vets. So, if he wants it, he's got to commit, a hundred percent. Yeah, he's got to put in his all into it. So, and I think he can. I just think he's got to get it right. You know, he'll he'll figure it out. So, especially when he comes back to North America for the training camp and the preseason, he'll 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 figure it out. Like what you saw? Be sure to come back next week for episode 361 of the Black and Gold Hockey Podcast for Sam Smith, Mark Allred, and Don Tiano discuss the latest on Bruins goaltender Jerry Swift. See you then.